check the teeth. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did that. That would've been fun. Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for my April haul and favorites, and I've got some PR this time, so if you'd like to see that, please keep watching. I'm starting with a bit of a controversial item. So if you watch my channel, you know I don't really feature things that I don't like, or um, I don't really criticize them too much. However, in this case, it's kind of like a hot button item, um, and something I was actually looking really forward to trying, and I did purchase it, but I have some thoughts around it as well. So this is the Tom Ford concealer, the motion proof concealer. <laughs> they just got a Tom Ford counter near me, so I was able to try out the shades because that's the trickiest part when it comes to concealer for me. So I found a really good match in Nine Sienna. So I tried it out and it reminded me a lot of this product. And I was actually going to recommend this for the VIB promotion, but I noticed they only had two shades on there. So if you watch Michelle, she posted a video on this comparing it to the Estee Lauder, I think, concealer, which I'm not familiar with. And then she noticed a smell. And I thought that's really interesting because I noticed the same kind of smell with this one as this. It's kind of like a paint-like smell, very faint, but it's present and it doesn't wear away. I've had this one for a while. So then I got really curious. I went to go look at the ingredient deck on both of these. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I snapshotted both of them and they look nearly identical. Also, of course, I saw Wayne Goss's video and now I wanna try the Smashbox one. Concealer is a workhorse for me, especially in the summer. If you're new here and you haven't seen me deal with these spots, they are right in the center of my face. They are pretty big. I mean, they're like bigger than a quarter, I think. They sit right on my pores, which is the most texture on my face. When it gets hot, that's where I perspire the most. I have to have a concealer that will perform. It can't just be like a nice concealer. It needs to be a, like I'm gonna count on this concealer to do a good job and stay in place all day. And it takes quite a bit just because I go in, the method I use is thin layers with a beauty blender which absorbs some of that material, but that's the best finish I can get to get it to lay flat to the skin. And this performs like this on me. So the wear on this is very, very similar to me, if not the same. I need this to work for me and I need it to last. And if the Smashbox one costs less and is the same thing and is the same shade, then I would be very happy with the Smashbox one. So what I'll do is I will purchase the Smashbox one and see if I can get a color match. So half the battle, if not more than half the battle, is finding the correct shade. If the shade is off, then it's kind of, pointless because I can't wear it if it's not the right shade. So I wanna see if there's a shade that matches this or a shade that's even better because I'm still having to color correct. I'm mixing a little bit of that Urban Decay um, in there to color correct and then apply it. But I have it on now. Like actually I have both of these on now and they're very nice. And But like I said, not interested in the drama. I just need it to work. If you wanted my thoughts on it, that those are my thoughts. I need it to work and if it works, then I'm gonna go with this. But if the Smashbox one works just as well, then I'm gonna go with the Smashbox one. But I will do a side-by-side -side for you um, of these with a the Smashbox um, so you can see and I can see too what the best investment is. That was 10 minutes on here, so hopefully I will have edited that down a little bit because that was a long rambly kind of like, that was long rambly. So these are the next items I picked up, these lovely, lip glosses by Hourglass. I've been wearing this one over and over for the past couple days or so since I got them and just hydrating, really interesting applicator that I haven't necessarily seen before for a lip gloss. I really like the applicator too. You wouldn't expect that it would um, do a good job, but it does a really nice job. So if you'd like to see those in action, I will link the video below. Oh, I picked up this Anastasia brow gel. I think it's like a reissue. I'm not quite sure. I thought they had a brow gel before because I believe I used it before. Um, so I'm not sure if the formula is different or not. I just needed a brow gel that works, but I still really like the Glossier one the best. Um, but I got mine in ash brown. It's more um, of a mascara consistency compared to the Glossier Boy Brow. I like the Glossier Boy Brow because it's a little bit drier. Um, this one is a little bit more liquidy, so you have to be careful with how you apply it or else it can get out of control really quickly. So if you're not really comfortable <laughs> with these yet, I would maybe go with a clear one because this one, even for me, and I use this on my brows or I use a brow product every day, was like, whoa, it deposited way too much um, 
when I first put it on and I had to go through it with a comb. Oh, the Sephora video. I used it, I think for the second time and I put way too much on, but it was like too late. So if you look at my brows there, they're a little bit heavy because I put this on um, unintentionally heavy. So just be careful with this. If you want a lot of product deposited quickly, though this is a good one, I personally don't, but I will use this until until it's gone. I think as it dries out, it might get easier to work with, but it's very, it's harder to work with initially. I picked up another Clé de Peau. I wish I could pronounce that correctly, but I picked it up in Honey. It's got that SPF 25, which I really appreciate. This is my go-to skin-like finish. And sometimes I'll even mix it in with other concealers, like the YSL concealers I talked about. And also I would even mix it in with this. Just sometimes it gets too dark or it's not radiant enough. So I'll go in and kind of just layer this in and plus it serves as an extra layer of sunscreen. So I really like that about it. So. I went and I got another one of these. Charlotte Tilbury. I picked this up. I got the $100 gift card thing with your points. I don't know if you remember. If you follow me on Instagram, I post when those things are available if I see them. Um, but I picked up this, which is something I've been wanting to try but hadn't yet. And someone asked me what color should I get and I didn't know because I hadn't tried it. So I picked up the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. Now, I used this once before, twice, something like that in a video. And I was wondering, why does my shadow look like so gray? And I I was wondering if it was this. So I know that everyone loves this. I don't know if I love this yet. I'm gonna have to use it a little bit more because it came across as too cool on me, which I mean, it doesn't look like it should, but I'm gonna keep trying it. So I don't wanna say for sure, although this is beautiful, not as a highlight, as a blush though. Um, this is beautiful as a blush. So this though, the sculpt color, I don't know. I'm gonna have to keep working with it and see, but I don't wanna say yay or nay yet, but I wasn't initially wowed by it as much as everyone else is wowed by it. So yeah, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why. I, because I love Charlotte Tilbury and I love her powder products, but this, I don't know, maybe the expectations were too high for me on this one. So I'm gonna keep trying and let you know how it works and I'll maybe show it to you in action so you can see. And see, I told you I love her powder products. I picked up another airbrush flawless finish in medium two. I love this powder, especially it's kind of like one a layer in between the hourglass ambient lighting powders. It gets too, a little too uh, reflective and I want to mat it down just a little bit. So I'll put this on top sometimes to finish that, but it has color to it, which I like. It's not translucent and it does pull a little bit peach, which I need. I'm always looking for something that's gonna pull a little bit peach. I just wanted to talk to you about this primer that I've been using and testing out. I've been testing out for a good month or so and give you some thoughts on it because some of you I think were curious about it. It's the Marc Jacobs Prime Velvet Primer and I've been using it every day with my mascara, which I have on right now. And one thing I can tell you is that this is much thicker than the Dior 3D Maximizer Primer, which I love. I love that one because it separates. This one though, just puts a lot on at one time. So if you like that and you want that really, really quick buildup, this is a good one. I prefer the Dior one because it separates a little bit more. It's a little bit more refined. This just goes on like a lot at once. So I will go in with a mascara that's thinner to help separate that after. So depending on what combination of mascara I wanna use, I will use this and then something that's gonna separate like the By Terry one is a good one. The one that has the lash enhancer one. And then there's another mascara that I got that I'll talk about in a little bit that I've been using with this as well. So it's a good one. I'll continue to use it. This one I can't let dry down too much before I go in and go in with a mascara to kind of separate it though because it will like kind of stick my lashes together. The Dior one I can let dry and then go in with mascara a little bit easier after. So this one I kind of have to go in quickly after I add it, but it builds volume quickly if that's what you're looking for. Just maybe go in with a mascara that will separate after you put this on. Now I haven't tried it with the Marc Jacobs mascara, which might make a difference. I'm not quite sure how that one works, but um, I like to use different mascaras with the same primer, if that makes sense. So I like the Dior one, it's a little bit more versatile, but I will continue using this, but it's very nice. I mean, it's just volume building quickly. 
Next, the YSL haul I did, I posted a video on that recently, last week or so. It's when they had the pop-up shop, I stopped in. These were not available yet at that time. Um, I think they said May, so I was able to try those. Really fun. Then I talked about the Tushy High Cover Radiant Concealer. This one I got a 4.5 most recently. It's the best color for the interior of my face, although I do use five to kind of adjust a little bit. It doesn't set down like the Tom Ford products. The YSL one doesn't set by itself. I got the lipstick as well, this lovely red, which pulled kind of pink on me, but it's a little bit more sheer than what I'm currently wearing in terms of other bright lipsticks, but it's, it's a nice one. I mean, there's nothing bad to say about it. It's a very nice red, pulls a little bit pink on me. Oh, here's a favorite. Of mine that I've been using but I just wanted to point something out to you it's very grubby looking so excuse that but it is the color science total eye um, 3 in 1 renewal therapy in SPF 35 and if you're on Instagram they've been featuring Mandy my friend Mandy Davis um, in their ad I suppose for it but one thing that I've been reading about is that we're missing putting sunscreen on our eyelids so I've been placing this under my eye and also on my eyelids and I kind of work it in and it doesn't mess with my makeup too much but I thought that is probably I think that's like the one place I haven't been putting sunscreen I put sunscreen all over my face and under my eye but then I kind of skip my eyelids which makes sense that you should put sunscreen on your eyelids okay so depending I think on your eye skin type mine's dry so I don't have problems with things slipping around anyway if you have oily eyelids then I don't know how well that will work for you but it just was a really good Point that we are missing <laughs> putting sunscreen there. I picked up this Simple Beauty Skin Brightening Spot Corrector. So I'm always trying to correct my spots. And I noticed that after a while, after I use a product, it doesn't have as much of an effect as it did earlier. So I don't know if my skin gets tired. I kind of try and change it up every once in a while. So I picked this up because I was reading a bunch of articles like the best spot brightener. And I don't know if this company is new, but it's called Simple Beauty. It's a 30 mil, um, pretty hefty jar. So this should last me quite a while. So I just started using this hmm, last night. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to really give this a try and see how well it works, but I will try anything to see if it works. And there were some pretty good reviews and articles on this. So I'll let you know. Oh, I needed some moisturizer. My, the Miracle, Ultimate Miracle Worker night and day and i usually like to get them as a set so the day and the evening one together and i can usually get a deal like that and i looked on philosophy site they didn't have any discounts and then i thought someone told me about qvc once about something else that i think the alginess product so i thought let me go to qvc and see what they have well they had this they had the day cream they had i don't use this but i'll try it it's a lip serum stick plump and smooth the miracle worker fix Ultimate Miracle Worker Fix. I just took out of the box, I haven't used it yet. Not that I use these, but I will, because I have them now. The Micro Delivery Exfoliating Facial Wash. Look how big this is. And the Purity One Step Facial Cleanser. I've used this before, it's okay, not my favorite, but it's good. And all of that was like $100, which is crazy because I think the cream itself is like $80 or something like that. Yeah, I got all of that for like $100-ish. Yeah, I'll link it below if it's still available. But thank you for the tip to go to QVC because I forget to look there for deals and that was a really, really good deal. Sometimes the sites, the sites for the companies offer good discounts and I got, I think it's 25% on the Bobbi Brown eye cream that I love. So I picked that up, the Ultimate Eye Repair Cream. So I tried to point out things to you on that Sephora recommendations that rarely go on sale or um, are hard to find on their sites on sale, or like the site doesn't go on sale as much. But Bobby Ryan has pretty good promotions every once in a while, so does Philosophy. So I try to steer away from those that I know you could probably get for a better deal elsewhere. Oh, I've been using this, the DeBronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Serum. Someone asked me about if I believed all the hype around Drunk Elephant, and I'm like, I don't know, I haven't tried their products. But I forgot I tried this, the Anti-Pollution Sunshine Serum, not as a skincare thing, but I'll use it as a, like a liquid bronzer, because as it gets warmer, I don't typically like to put powder products on, because it kind of is hard to um, keep in place, so I'll go in with something liquid or cream. So this has been a nice like bronzer. That's the only drunk elephant thing I've tried. This video is gonna be so long, I am watching my time and it's, I'm gonna try and talk a little bit faster. On to Sun PR, which 
I have not received until recently. Um, I have been approached though by other companies that I have declined their items or um, say they asked me to do a video to feature their items in exchange for items and I've also declined that and thanks to Stephanie Marie she's kind of helped me navigate that because I wasn't sure what to do once I was starting to get approached but I knew that at the heart of everything was integrity so that's kind of how I made my decisions as these things were coming to me. So when a company purchased me, there are a few filters that everything gets put through. So is this a company that I've either purchased from or had good experience with in the past? Two, is this something that I would buy but maybe haven't because I'm not aware of their company yet or for some reason haven't gotten around to it? And then three, is this something that you wanna see? It kind of goes through those things and helps me decide on what to do. So when a company approaches me, I will research them. I look them up, kind of see um, where they came from, what their story was and what they stand for. So if I like what I see, then I'll say yes, that'd be great. And then they send me items. So there's no expectation to create a video or even talk about it really. Um, and if that ever does come up and it's an ad or paid promotion, I'll definitely let you know. In fact, legally I have to let you know. So in the case of these items that I'm gonna talk about, three out of four of the companies just sent me things. The last one, which was Influencer, um, they sent me some things to test, but then I had to post a review on it. Honest review though, it wasn't like post a favorable review, it was test these out and post a review. So in terms of integrity, that's at the heart of this channel. And if I don't have integrity, I pretty much don't have anything. So if I love something, I'll talk about it a lot. I will show it to you, um, I will post about it. But if I don't like something, which is the way this works in general with my channel, is I don't talk about it. So that's kind of how you know what I'm loving is I talk about it. And if I don't like something, then I generally I just don't talk about it. So Christine over at Freeze Co Beauty, she saw my videos and I think she saw it through Mandy and she said, I have these products, would you like to try them? And we talked about the Sappho New Paradigm products and I didn't know much about them. So again, I looked them up and I'm looking here. It's uh, founded by an Emmy nominated makeup artist, Joanne Fowler, developed with experts in the field of green chemistry. I know some of you are really interested in green or clean beauty and so I said, yeah, I think that that would be something that I would like to try and that I think that you would like to see. So she said, what would you like to try? And I said, oh, okay, well, I would like to try everything, but here are some things that look like they might be interesting. So I just listed them and she ended up sending me all of them. So thank you again so much for that because I did not expect that. I thought I would try maybe one or two things if I was lucky. Uh, I asked about few eyeshadows and because they are green they like to save on packaging thinking about sustainability so they send them in these pans now this is just a z palette i had i've just had it empty um so i have these three eyeshadows here oh my goodness I almost dropped it okay i'm like sweating okay so this one is in victoria very pretty color then we also have minas I don't know if that's how to pronounce it, but it's like a shell color, a little bit more iridescence. And then there is this black one called Raven. So I always like to try a black eyeshadow because I feel like I can get a sense of the products based on their black eyeshadow. And then um, Bronze Goddess. So this was listed as a blush, but it looks more like a bronzer. I've been kind of playing around with those a little bit. In fact, I've used some of these in that Sephora video. But I want to do a look, just like solidify my thoughts and do a look for you with these. She also sent me a couple of samples of the foundation, Rosalina and Jennifer. By the way, this is also luxury clean beauty. I forgot to mention that. So it, of course that's a luxury price tag. And then there's an organic lip gloss, which I have layered over something right now. And this is in Rita. Really pretty and nice to kind of think about because we consume so much of our lip products that I think having a lip product that's clean is a really good idea. And then there's this vegan mascara. This is the one I mentioned I've been using with the Marc Jacobs primer because the bristles on these separate really nicely. So they're kind of a nice pairing together. I will be putting a clean beauty look together for you and be posting that in the next coming weeks. Thank you again to Frisco Beauty for sending those to me complimentary to try out. This company reached out to me and 
wanted to send me product as well. So if you know Sonic Experian, which I was familiar with, but I didn't know the connection between her and this company. So this is her makeup company. They sent me their best sellers. So this is the Ultimate Eyeshadow Palette for Brown Eyes, the Identity Palette, which is so cute. This is cruelty free. And these items by Persona were again sent to me complimentary to test out. So this uh, is the palette and I have many of the shades on my eyes right now. So I'm really impressed with this. I've tried this uh, a couple times already and just, I didn't know what to expect, but they're very creamy, so easy to work with, and just really pretty colors. So I will also be putting together a cruelty-free beauty look for you. They also sent to me this Holy Grail liquid lip, and then also the Honey Gloss, which right up my alley in terms of a neutral look. I don't particularly love like powder highlights, but they sent me this one in Zuma, and it is so pretty. I have it on right now right here. So I know I've talked about powder highlighters kind of being hard to work with, especially if you have texture, but this one is really, really beautiful. Thank you Persona Cosmetics for sending that to me. That is also coming up in terms of a cruelty-free beauty look. Again, I feel so fortunate to receive these because this is like, <laughs> you don't ever think it's going to happen when you start your channel that someone would actually send you something. So just looking at all of this is kind of overwhelming that people sent this to me so Emile Cordon they sent me their the miracle lip balms in four shades so I got them in chick 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 boom chick chick boom which I've been using a lot you can see there also powdered rose and rose imperial and then mandarin garden so I signed up for influencer like I don't know, many months ago, completely forgot I even did that. And then I got an email and said, do you want to be part of this campaign for these hair products? And I was like, sure, because this looks like something that you would like to try or probably have already tried. I have not myself tried this or this. I think this is the new one. Um, so it's a Christophe Robin and it's the cleansing, purifying scrub with sea salt. Again, sent to me by Influencer for testing purposes. This one, was interesting to me because whenever I get my hair colored, my scalp gets really itchy. Like I'm just scratching my head for probably two days until it settles down. So this one was recommended for kind of that time. It says, this purifying, moisturizing, and soothing shampoo is, a, is ideal as a detox or post coloring treatment. The scalp is soothed and rebalanced. So that's what my scalp needs. In fact, I ask my hairstylist to please extra rinse the top of my scalp because it gets so itchy and even when she does that, it still lingers for a couple of days. So that's what I really wanted to try this for, although I did try it out just to see. Anyway, it's got like grit in there, like salt in there. So you would think that that would be dry, but it's very moisturizing. I haven't tried it directly after hair coloring yet, so I need to try it right after that, but I did try it. So one thing I thought is that I'd be able to get the salt really close to my scalp and be able to kind of scratch my head with them. So it didn't really work that way. I had, I could feel the grains, but they were more in my hair than on my scalp. So I don't know if it takes practice to focus that salt onto your scalp, but that's what I would really like it to do. So it didn't do that but it was kind of like a softening effect on my hair and it says it's for sensitive or oily scalp. So I do have dry hair, but my scalp can get oily. So I thought this was an interesting product to try. And my hair did appear shinier after this. I use that in tandem with this, the tea tangling gelée. So this one was what they really wanted us to focus on. So this one is the detangling gelée with sea minerals. I thought that this would just kind of release the tangles from my hair. Um, and what's interesting about this is that you don't leave it in like a conditioner, you just put it in and rinse it out. So I thought it was going to do magical things about detangling, but it didn't detangle per se. I still had to go through it with a brush. So I didn't notice the detangling. So I don't know if this is marketed incorrectly because it says it mineralizes, strengthens, and hydrates. So I saw more of the hydration than anything else. Again, my hair was nice and shiny. And so this is something, these two will be something I'll be using every once in a while just to kind of restore my hair. So again, very, very thankful to everyone who sent me something. I really appreciate it. So I did want to share this even though it's not makeup or skincare, but it is beauty related because I've been reading a lot about how sugar affects 
the dark spots on your face. So I've been trying to avoid sugar. Just my family in general is trying to avoid sugar and refined carbs. So I found this at Whole Foods, the protein bar. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen me talk about this. So I bought it once, made it, tested it out. Um, so you just mix this with a little bit of bananas. I started out with bananas, I mushed those up, and then I added some, it says you can add nut butter, but I added peanut butter, and then kind of mushed those together, and then I just added the mix. I rolled it up, and then I rolled it in some desiccated or um, dried coconut. And then they are good for two weeks in the refrigerator, so, I posted this and they commented back and talked about how other protein bars too that you buy in the store have preservatives in them most of the time because they're on the shelf. So this doesn't have that. And then also just the packaging. So if you're concerned about um, the environment, then you can actually store them once they're done. They don't all fit in here, but you can store them in the bag once they're done. Also, there's 12 grams of protein in here and two grams of sugar, which is really good. And I don't sweeten it. You can sweeten it with whatever you want. I don't sweeten it with anything. I like it the way it is because once we got away from sugar, then anything with sugar tasted like too sweet. So I like it the way it is. And it also has six grams of fiber. I also picked up peanut butter and jelly get in my belly. I haven't tried it yet, but it you add milk and honey. So I don't know what we'll do about that. I'm gonna try to avoid sweetening it here. And then this one is way hip chocolate chip. Anyway, if you follow their Instagram account, they're always posting things that other people make with their mixes, which I really like because it's inspirational. But this has been a um, really nice snack on the go because sometimes things move too fast around here and uh, it's hard to find things to eat. So this has come in really, really handy. I love the skirt that I bought. I posted on Instagram and I will put in some stills photos because this is not, you're not gonna be able to see, but it's the skirt I got from Vince. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't make any sense. All you see is fabric. I'm able to wash it in hand wash mode in the machine and then I just lay it flat to dry and it's just as good as ironing. So I really love this skirt. It's my favorite piece for the spring because of the belt. I like the belt in the front. I like how it's lightweight. I love the shape of it. We're taking a trip this summer where I'm gonna be strategic in my packing and that's something that'll go with me. So you've seen this hat before, but somehow I managed to mush mine and it doesn't look at anything like this anymore. My sister just posted a picture with her wearing hers and I'm like, did you get a new one? She said, no, this is my same one. Like the same one she's had for five years. And I asked her, can you please tell me how to keep it in the shape yours is in? And she says, yeah, don't sit on it. So I don't know what I, I didn't sit on mine, but I don't know what I've done to it. But this is the hat. I'm not gonna put it all the way on my head, but it is UPF 50. So that is the reason I'm willing to pay the price on that because it is like sunscreen, an extra layer of sunscreen. It's pretty much like holding an umbrella. You don't have to hold it, but it is stylish and sunscreen. So I wear this quite a bit during the summer and plus on our trip, I'll be needing that. So I think that's it. I feel like I've talked for an hour, which maybe I have. So I've turned this camera on because it keeps turning off when it gets tired. So that's it. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.